so um, we're so heading into the uh, like what we call the equipment yard and okay. our concrete batch plant area. Um, there's another entrance that we can take as well, but um, going this way for right now. And what's this property over here? So I mean, it's all vacant land basically. That's within the within the lot. Gated, yeah. If you look at it on the map, um, the entire 250 acres, right? The 101.4 is, uh, dash seven is, is a portion of it. Yeah. So, when, when you hear about the land being sold to Yonex uh, from the Taurus, uh, this is what Yonex, the property, they started building all these structures. So what we've done is we kind of completed them on internally. And, uh, cause you know, it was vacant for a while. This is the when, worker house. Yeah, when the build up was delayed. And you can see straight away where you're actually looking at the treatment plant project. Okay. So, so this right up here is 101.84-7. Yeah, yeah, we're basically. And this is it. the the workforce housing, and there's the concrete yeah, batch so plant. This is our concrete batch plant. Okay. And, you know, we actually, uh, oh, so the, the property is just right next to each other. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, it's basically part of that part. Of the yeah. Property. And I'll show you. So what happened was when they started doing this project. Um, there was a time when they just broke down the fence here and like decided to extend their property line. Okay, where was the fence? Right, the so we're looking fence. at it right here. So that's the new fence right there? Yeah, so we're gonna drive along okay. uh, the right. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I would think they went through a permit process too, right? So. Well, yeah, they would have to go through the same sort of permitting process that courts have yeah, to well, batch plant. Well, you know, one of the things if you, if you, um, you know, go into like the GWA records, you'll notice that you know, they're, they actually were paying for surveying or land management for the property. I think they're even paying for the, the legal bills uh, that are associated with the lawsuit. So it's, it's it's kind of interesting because you know, land management, ancestral lands, there's there are mandates, right? They're supposed to be more protective of local landowners, not necessarily getting on one side or another. Especially with the utility and, and when there's federal government involved, it's, it kind of seems contrary to what they're enabling. Actually, right? when the property was given back, they were—I think the federal government was actually using it as a quarry because it was already a quarry. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, I mean, you know, obviously we're filling it and then using it to uh, yeah, have materials. So we, when you do excavation on properties, and stuff like but um, they were the. Contractor and DPW and uh, GWA were basically wanting to use this road uh, to bring their dump trucks and stuff to the wastewater treatment plant project. Okay. And you know, also this is also Portek property. So the reason we had closed this area off was because we had equipment here, um, and you know, this is a dark area. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, yeah. So and then, you know, it could be vandalized and stuff, and it's expensive equipment. Well, they came with like DPW to like basically threaten. To impose, you know, fines or something on us, and so we had to remove our barriers. And once we did that, um, then obviously, uh, what we expected to happen happened. The, there was vandalism. There, our equipment was vandalized. You know, was, and so, see this. This is where it was. Blocking. Yeah. So this is where we were blocking people from kind of entering, and they made us move these barriers, saying that it's not our property, right? And so, uh, you know, now we have to deal with it in court. But you know, basically. Is this a separate court issue or? Well, I mean, it's just part it? all part of the okay. same issue, right? So, you know, it has to, the, the basis of the entire issue is who owns the land. And, you know, the government of Guam was accepting property taxes for the land. And now, uh, you know. And in, they in have their sense, own, they have yeah. their own easement to access their property, right? Well, they can, they can do it through like the two lovers point, point road. road yeah. yeah. Right. And there's no reason they can't do it through there. So it's not like they were being blocked. No, I mean, it's for them, it just it made it more convenient for their project. And I think that, you know, they wanted to maybe minimize, you know, because if you go that way, how you turn onto route one versus how you do it this way, it's a lot easier. But is this a public? No, it's, 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 it's not. This is not. part it's of Cortex. In fact, GWA though. was trying to get Cortex to uh, allow an easement while well, this is all going on as well. It's kind of, what are we looking at over here? This, this is, is the, the Northern Wastewater Treatment Yeah, so basically this is the expansion and, and I think, uh, you know, it's a large project and I think part of this too might be the property that they acquired for like the GPA solar plant or something. Yeah. 180 megawatt. Remember that story? Yeah. Well, you happen to know where the 20 foot 
easement for the pipeline to Camp Lodge? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh there, there's a new uh, water treatment facility yeah, yeah. right there. Yeah. So the easement is like in here more, uh, but I think there's a, there's a side entrance I'm sure. No, that one was never in dispute, right? The the 20 foot easement. I, I, at least that's what my understanding from the the documents. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that forever belonged to or was assigned to the United States government or something like that. Well, you have to think about it, right? So all of our waste, our wastewater in northern Guam goes to this treatment plant. Yeah. So even Cortec would be hurting itself if it tried to shut down the yeah. treatment plant. That's not the point, right? The point is how the treatment plant, right? So, you know, and the encroachment. The encroachment yeah, is a big issue. It's a huge issue because, you know, in order to finance any sort of property development, banks require, right, you have the, you know, the be simple right to the land or at least a, a leasehold of some sort right and if you don't then you know you can't really use rights to the land so so giving you know giving land back to local landowners and not allowing them the full land rights is almost like giving them property taxes that's it that's all you're doing you're just putting them more in debt you know and, and a lot of the local landowners that received land back from the local government because of the federal government return um, that's why you don't see them developing a lot of their property too. It's because it's not like these people had a lot of money um, and they could just say, oh, we have property. Now we have, you know, all the resources in the world to, you know, feed our families. I mean, even during the GLUC process for the batch plant, when we met all the, a lot of the local landowners in the area, you know, the, they shared their concerns. They're like, you know, we just want to be able to at least use our land for something because, you know, we don't have a lot of money. And, you know, one of the things we explained to them is we bought 250 acres here. We didn't buy five acres. So it's in our best interest to preserve the value of the property in this area, right? So, you know, just like what we did in, if you think about it, like Oka Uh it was a big eyesore, right? The four towers um, and, you know, had an impact on property values. And now we've completed the project. Uh, you know, it's a beautiful place and um, we didn't even make it as dense as it was, as it was planned, and you know, the uh, the outcome is you have better property values in the area for those who own houses. There, right? So, as a private company, we're always going to act in the best interests of our investments, and that's why we're good good neighbors because we, whenever we invest in a, in a village or in an area, the adjacent landowners are, they're, they're, there's going to be a benefit for them. We're going to develop it. We're going to, you know, enhance the utilities, and, and that's what's kind of a shame about what GWA is doing is that they're kind of leading this charge against a local landowner, and they're supposed to be, you know, a government, a local government entity. Right? Ancestral lands as well. I mean, that they made that deal with GWA and they sold the property that wasn't theirs. Um, and the whole purpose of ancestral lands is to protect local property rights, right? So that's, you know, I need to call land management. The whole purpose of PRAT, right, when you do base root green line and enclosure, the reason why it's done the way the federal government has it set up is because they know that there's a social economic impact to the community, right? So like, <clears throat> for instance, closing of SRF, we lost you know, thousands of families went off island, right? Local families, uh, because of the jobs, they lost their jobs. And so they had to leave island, you know, go find work elsewhere. And, you know, it, it was a huge social impact as well. Um, so when the federal government does those sorts of things, it's, it's supposed to mitigate its negative impact, obviously. And so things like affordable housing, um, you know, those sorts of things are kind of like mandates within the BRAC law, the federal BRAC law, so that, you know, the military going in and out of the community doesn't just become such a huge detriment to the actual community, right? Because of whatever their defense strategy is at the time. You look at this area and where this is happening right now, this is one of the most poor census tracts in the entire island, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this whole area here. Um, you're looking at the Ukudu area and, you know, Dedido in general, right? Now you look at affordable housing, 
there's a greater need for affordable housing. So all of these impacts, right? Crime, you know, housing, all these things um, where that Guam struggles with uh, is, is it's, it's like very concentrated in this area and it's the worst place for the local government to not kind of jump, you know, to defend our citizens uh, and our business owners. It's, it's, this is where they should really make their stand, right? I mean, when you talk about, um, you know, what opportunities we may have, you know, despite if, you know, without the buildup or, I mean, this, this is where you could make that stand. And uh, what's unfortunate is it kind of seems like the utilities are just, you know, acting in the interest of the utilities. And it's not necessarily the local resident or citizen which was the intent of like laws that created ancestral land and all those sorts of things, you know, that, that's really being thought about, right? I mean, well, there's you the brought up a good issue. Have. You brought up that good issue and I heard Clinton talk about it was, you know, what does this mean for all the other properties that might have that reversionary clause, yeah?